Hi guys, Richard here. So I'm getting a few questions around what marketing looks like within a tech company. So I thought I'd make a video doing kind of an overview quickly. Um, this is just kind of like my view. There might be certain things I might miss, especially um, in corporate marketing because generally I sit in dimension and in the field. But I'm gonna explain those terms in a sec as well, what that means. So I'm gonna go straight into it. I don't wanna waste too much time. So um, the first function of the, I guess the marketing function that I wanna talk about is the demand generation and operations. So operations it can be a bit separate sometimes, but I'm gonna group them here together. So demand generation is, as the name sounds, you're generating demand from a company. And a lot of the times these people sit in either, um, so even in the field or field or in the corporate function. So this is how I view it. So in the field, generally you are um, outside the HQ. So let's say your headquarters is in San Jose. Your field is anything outside the headquarters. So that's your corporate marketing and your field marketers are the ones outside. Could be even, could be one sitting in the US as well. Like let's say in New York, could be one sitting like Australia, like myself. So you're kind of like the field, you're, the, you're on the field, right? Outside in the field. And corporate marketing is just like the HQ. So you're based in the San Jose, like whatever um, HQ where it is and you're generally focusing on more, um, I'd say a lot of strategy, but let's get into some of the stuff that you can do in demand gen. So you have a few areas. Um, these are definitely not all of them, but I'm just trying to group as much as I can. Um, so these are the three that exist in demand generation that I personally think um, kind of like do hold the whole demand gen piece. So you got digital. Pretty obvious, um, paid social, organic social, Facebook, LinkedIn, like you can name all the emails even. Like there's a lot of digital stuff out there. You can just do a quick Google search to see what's fair. Um, a lot of the times it's, um, the, the big difference is B2B versus B2C. A lot of business to business transactions are le lead based as well as it's more of a, like it can take months and years to do it, I guess a transaction. And so a lot of times you're nurturing the leads, you are giving them content constantly and stuff like that. Well, as B2C is tends to be more transactional, like if you're buying a keyboard, you're not gonna wait a year to buy a keyboard unless it's like a really awesome keyboard or something and you're trying to wait for a special. But generally, if you're buying goods, you're trying to sell them immediately. Like Amazon wants you to buy immediately usually. And so normally B2Cs are transactional and B2B is more like conversational or like re relationship-based marketing. Um, and so that's the main difference there. That's the only thing you kind of need to know there. Um, events is pretty straightforward. A lot of people just actually don't realize that events is a huge, function of tech companies because there's so many tech um, kind of like events out there, right? You've got Dreamforce, AWS Summit, um, I should lay like Microsoft, like Microsoft Ignite, I think. So like you've got all these events and stuff. Um, and a lot of times you're going to these events, you're sponsoring them in order to generate leads, right? And so a lot of times events is a big function of a tech company for marketing. However, right now with COVID-19, obviously events is kind of like, don't really have any. so. A lot of the times it's now gone virtual. You've got your virtual events, you've got um, virtual like workshops, virtual like everything, right? And so a lot of the times right now, especially events is kind of tied in with digital. Digital events are now working together um, a lot of the times now. And then you've got partner marketing, which is a completely different, also not really understood part of marketing to a lot of people out there. A lot of the times Microsoft, AWS, Google, all these big like tech technology companies, they don't actually sell their own products they get other people to sell their products, right? So let's say you own a, uh, let's say you own, like you write some books, like you don't, you're not gonna go out there. I mean, you will, you could, but you could um, also give the book to a bookstore to sell it, right? And that in a way is kind of like the whole partner relationship. You have a product, obviously you can make more money, more money by giving to other people and they get a cut, but obviously you have a wider distribution network. So you make more money because your product gets out there more instead of trying to go one by one or direct to consumer or, or to businesses, right? And so partner marketing is a huge function by working with other partners, especially if they are uh, companies purely based on selling other people's products. For example, DXE is a huge company that predominantly is a partner market, a partner kind of company where they sell other people's products, right? And package it up into kind of like one package. So for example, if you are selling a tech product, you can package your networking, you can package your cloud, you can package like everything together. So you make it a really cool kind of like uh, package and then you sell that package to comp other companies, right? And so those, these are what part, partner kind of like companies do, right? So that's one part of demand generation. Now operations is similar um, in a sense that it's sitting in that kind of function, but generally they focus more on the numbers, the analytics. They don't do the selling like or lead generations much, but they focus on how the leads are coming in, mm -hmm. 
using a variety of tools like Salesforce, Marketo, Google Analytics even, and like you obviously like got more um, like Adobe Analytics, which is a more a, an enterprise version of that. And so you got using these tools to kind of like help manage your leads and uh, making sure that the demand generation team is make, like getting uploading the leads into the systems and all the processes and stuff like that. If you love numbers, if you love analytics and you want to work in marketing, probably marketing operations is a good kind of function for you. Now, let's go into the second part. So we got creative and brand. So this is like a very typical function of any type of um, company, but in tech companies, generally it's quite focused around what the brand perception is um, overall. Um, so they're kind of like the eyeballs of a company looking at every what marketing is doing. So generally these people do sit in corporate. So if you want to work in creative brand, you kind of want to find, you probably have to find a company based in your area that's the kind of the headquarters, right? And so a lot of times they're kind of like watching what field marketers do because field marketers is just like, because they're in like, for example, I'm in Australia, US is like so far away, generally we're like, okay, we'll just do our own thing. And you've got creative and brand constantly checking, okay, you know what, is that logo placed there correctly? Are you using the right colors? So kind of like the whole style guides, like they create that and they work on any of the designs. The creative team does do a lot of the design work. So for example, you put in a request in that you want to create some ads for LinkedIn, you go for the creative team, they create it, they do it on brand and give it back to you and it's approved so you can do it. So you can basically do those ads, right? And so a lot of the times they're doing like that whole kind of um, high level strategy of what the brand looks like as always doing some of the execution work of the creative side. So that's just creative and brand. The next part is um, com communications and PR. Now, some people might say this is not sitting under marketing, but I, but most of the time they're sitting under marketing. They don't have their own like PR, CMO, or whatever. So these people tend to focus on a few things. So you got generally you got internal so internal communications and external comms. I'm just want to call it comms because normally because you just sell it comms. Um, so a lot of people do know external comms. So that's your PR working with like. Um, publishers or news like uh, vendors and stuff in order to check what the kind of the articles out going out are so for example if a site releases a article and it might not be like it might be negative or it might not be showing your company good light generally a PR person will go hunt them down and go hey you need to change this like this and this and this otherwise we're gonna like put some legal action on you or something like that and so generally like they're like the hunters outside they're trying to get um, share a voice for your company, but also find people who are talking neg negatively about your company um, and trying to kind of like shut those down. And so they're kind of like the whole, um, what people perceive of your company outside brand, more around the like news articles and the writings and even videos and stuff, right? So they're like that kind of the external comms. And also on external comms, you have people also managing, helping manage like case studies and stuff. Like if you want to do case studies, generally like you have to get both companies approvals and stuff. And it's a lot of work around like the wording and so you're not saying anything too controversial and stuff like that and PR people work constantly on that. Now the side that people don't know much about is internal communications. Now, when you see, for example, if you work for a company and you see C-suite level like messages, like your CEO sending a message to the organization, you're like, wow, he has so much time to do that. No, generally these are internal communication people doing those messages. They're writing the messages and then the CEO might look at it and approve it and then they go out into the company. And so obviously these people are very, very talented in terms of like um, copywriting for the, especially for C-level executive kind of language. Um, so a lot of times you've got internal communication people doing that. And the second part of internal communications is just general employee kind of um, comms. So for example, any like, for example, if you've got certain stuff coming out that might be around, let's say, new budgets or new um, things they should know in the company, like, for example, changes and stuff, generally you've got the internal communications team doing that because they're focusing on comms within the company, right? So generally, internal communications only exist if the company is big enough to need one. Generally, external communications is the first, like, comms part that get, gets kind of, like, hired, and then you've got internal comms that come in a bit later. And the last one, which I kind of wanted to touch upon, is kind of a more traditional product marketing. So the best way to look at product marketing is you are the CEO of your product. Now, most companies have more than one product, especially if you're a big company. So let's just say, let's just take Lenovo. Um, they sell keyboards, they sell mouses and stuff like that. And so generally, if you're a product marketer, you're owning like a function or like a product, right? So you don't sell both like keyboard mouses or everything, right? You are generally a product marketer manager for a specific product. So if you say you're selling mouses, right? So I'm selling a mouse. I need to know how to get that into market. And the term for that is called go to market. That's a very uh, common term you'll hear, GDM or go to market. 
And it's basically, how do I take this product to market? Um, generally, this could mean, for example, so something as simple as I need to update the website or a full-blown strategy, understanding how many, like how much money you need to put in, like for example, going to vendors and selling it, um, going to like selling LinkedIn or Go Facebook ads or Google ads. You're basically doing the whole strategy piece. It's a lot of strategy. So if you love strategy, product marketing might be for you. Um, and a lot of the times you also get to do a lot of speaking sp um, stuff as well. So if you're really into that, product marketing is a great kind of area to work in. A lot of the times product marketing, do, do they do sit in corporate. So for example, if your company is based in Seattle, the product marketers are usually based over there. Um, you have sometimes like maybe like um, companies like Google and stuff, you do have product marketers sitting in the field as well. But for most, like I guess, um, medium-sized companies, generally your product marketers will sit in kind of where the HQ sits. And so hopefully um, those four will cover off the corporate. I'm gonna chuck in a fifth one that most people might hear of, especially if they're marketers already, and that's your growth arm. So you, you hear like your terms like growth hackers, or growth hackers, head of growth and stuff like that. Generally, it's more of a startup thing because um, they, the whole concept is you're doing quick tests. So you could do a test in one day and then change it to like the next day you're, you see some results, you change it and you changing it and changing it. If you think about corporate and what I just talked about, you have to go through so many approvals in order to get that going. And so it's kind of inefficient for growth hackers to sit in kind of like the organization and generally they evolve into marketers or uh, marketing functions as the company progresses into a bigger size. But generally in a smaller company, you've got your growth people kind of focusing on both sustainable and unsustainable growth. For example, unsustainable growth could be one by one emails and sustainable growth could just be like emailing a database, for example. Um, so hopefully this gives some insight um, around what marketing roles can look like in a tech company. Um, if you want some more detail on specific, on specific things, just leave a comment and I'll, I'm happy to like walk through it with you. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helps, thanks.